Hi! So in this video, we want to review the Apple Pie project in the App Development with Swift course. We need to download some assets that are used in this project, and in order to do that, we need to go to the iBooks um, App Development with Swift and download some files. So let's go over to our iBooks app, and you've got App Development with Swift open, and here I am basically at the introduction. And from there I want to go in a couple of pages until I get to this page 5, I believe, which says gather your materials. And here is a download link. Go ahead and download the file. You're going to get a zip file. When you unzip that, you're going to be presented with a folder like this that has assets for all of the projects that we're working on. We are looking at number two, Introduction to UI Kit, and down here it says Guided Project Apple Pie. So we're going to use these images. Go ahead and set that aside, and let's go and open Xcode, and let's create a new Xcode project. From here, I want to select the Single View app, and we'll go ahead and choose Next. We're going to give this a name. We're going to call this Apple Pie. You can set your own uh, defaults for the name and identifier. We're going to use Swift, and we won't use Core Data or Unit Tests right now. Go ahead and choose Next, and then save this to a location on your computer. From here, we need to set up the app to run only on the iPad. At the moment, when you use this template, it uh, sets it up for universal, which means it runs on iPhones and iPads. If you don't see this view already, um, it's from the project file, then under general, and notice we have the targets shown here on the left, and it says Apple Pie. This is the build that we're, the app that we're building. If you don't see this, you need to press this little icon here to show this sidebar. So here I am, Apple Pie General, and now I go to Deployment Info, and under Devices, I need to select iPad. So go ahead and set that. So now when you build this, it'll only run on the iPad. All right, let's go to our main.storyboard. From here, uh, we're presented with our view controller, and you'll notice that this is currently set. It says View as iPhone 8. Go ahead and change that, and let's go. Let's select our iPad, and then let's change the orientation to landscape. Now it's a little uh, big, so you can change the size here. We can also minimize that window there. Look at that. All right. When you look at the book, you'll see that the Apple Pie uh, game. It's kind of a little quiz where you choose select letters, and you're trying to guess a word. And there's a picture of an apple tree, and as you guess incorrectly, apple, apples fall off the tree. So what we want is to set up this so that when we add all of the elements on the screen, they fit where we want them. And in order to do that, we're going to use what is called a vertical stack view. If we go to our object library, now I'm using Xcode 10, and the object library button is now up here. In the past, the objects were down here on the bottom for like ever, and now they've changed it because why not? You can look at your object library, you can use a grid view, you can see them visually here, um, or you can see a description, you can filter. So if I start saying, if I say stack, I want the vertical stack view. So go ahead and click that, drag and let go. Now I have this object, and we want it to fill the entire screen. In order to do that, with this selected, I want to do the Add New Constraints button, and from here, go ahead and change these to zero, and as you do that, notice that it selects the constraints. So we are saying, constrain the left, top, right, and bottom to zero from each side meaning all the way to the edge. So go ahead and click Add for Constraints. All right. 
So what is a vertical stack view? Well, it's a container that takes visual objects and organizes them, if you can imagine, vertically. And guess what? There's a horizontal stack view which organizes them horizontally. You're good. Very good. So we're going to start with the image and we need to add some assets to our project. So go to the assets.xcassets folder and this is basically a container that represents all of the uh, images, assets that we can use. So go back to the folder that you downloaded and remember we unzipped these and we're going to select this and I'm going to go and I'm holding down shift. I selected the first one and I press shift and I select the last so I have all of them. Now click and drag and let go and now they're all within my assets folder. So now I can reference these anywhere in code within my application. Notice each image is slightly different. There's different numbers of apples on them. Cool. Okay, let's go back to the main storyboard. And from here, what we're looking for is a um, image view. We need to add an image view to our stack view. If I go back to my object library and I just say image, then here's my image view, click and drag and let go. Now, the defaults of the stack view, whether it's a vertical stack view or a horizontal stack view, is that it takes the object and it fills the available space. So it automatically took this UI image view and filled the entire space, which is what we want. Now let's go ahead and assign an image to that. So let's go here to, what is that? That's called the Attributes Inspector. That's what we want. Notice here we can select an image. If I click, it knows all of the images available. So go ahead and select one. doesn't matter which one. We're going to change this in code anyway. All right, now notice the image is a bit not what we want. Well, this is called the Content Mode which is how the image fills the available space. It says scale to fill, which resizes regardless of what the image should look like. It just makes it fill. So let's go ahead and select and change that to aspect fit. That means we're going to make sure the entire image fits and it's going to maintain the aspect ratio, meaning the width and height relative to its original size. Okay, so now we have our picture of our tree. The next thing we want to do, when you look at the book, you'll notice that there are rows of buttons. In order to have multiple rows of buttons organized where we can see them and we, we can set them, we don't have to manually uh, align each button, we'll use additional stack views. And in this case, we want to start with a uh, vertical stack view. So let's go back to our object library and let's go back to and just I'm going to type stack and we want another vertical stack view. And if I let go, it's automatically going to add it below the tree. Now, the stack view by itself doesn't have any dimensions until you put something in it. Well, what we're going to put in this vertical stack view is a horizontal stack view. So what we're doing is we're setting up rows of buttons. And so let's go ahead and add now a horizontal stack view. Go back to our object library. It already remembers what we've done. So go ahead and click and drag. Now at this point, we, we don't want to leave it in the main stack view. We want to add it to this one here. So make sure you drag and let go and notice it shows up there. Okay, now we need to add some buttons. Let's go to our object library and we'll just change this to button and click and drag. And again, because we're, it's difficult to see which one we're adding it to, make sure we add it to this last stack view here. Okay, next what we need to do is enable this so that the button shows up uh, properly. So right now things aren't uh, 
behaving properly, so let's fix that. If we look at our stack views, go ahead and select this first uh, vertical stack view, and notice in our attributes inspector, there is um, the distribution. The distribution we want to say fill equally. That way, as we add more objects, they will fill as much space, however many objects, and each object will take up the same amount of space. We want to do the same for our horizontal stack view. So go ahead and select that and set the distribution to fill equally. Now we have our button, and we need to have, we want five buttons going across. So go ahead and with that button selected, press Command C, and now press Command V. So now I've added a second button, press v, Command V again, third, fourth, and fifth button. Notice now it fills it properly, and we've got these five buttons. Okay, let's change the buttons so that the button label is a letter of the alphabet, and we want it to be a capital letter. So here we have A, B, C, D, E, so let's change those. So I'm just going to type capital A, select this button, capital, whoops, capital B, and capital C, and capital D. And notice if I double click, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. If I select the button, I can edit the button value here, or if I double click, I can edit the button here, so I'm going to go ahead and edit that as D or E. <laughs> I know my alphabet, right? Okay, so now that we have this one row of buttons, instead of copy pasting individual buttons, let's copy and paste the entire stack. So select the stack view and press Command C and then Command V and one more time and one more time and then finally a fifth row. Now the alphabet, if you remember correctly, is 26 letters and uh, a grid of 5 by 5 is only 25. So the last stack view, we need to add one more button. So go ahead and select that last button, Command C, Command V. Awesome. Okay, go ahead and update all of the letters. I'm going to, through the magic of television, do this quickly so you don't have to watch me type, and uh, I'll see you in a second. All right, hopefully all of your letters added up to the right number and you've got everything there. If you need, you could ask uh, maybe one of your children or your nieces or nephews to come over and help you so that uh, you get it right, because apparently I can't spell either. Okay, next we need to add a couple of labels that will show up below our grid of buttons. So at the moment we have these stack views and notice we have all of our letters here. This is also a good way to visually check that you've entered all of the uh, alphabet correctly. I'm going to minimize these. In fact, I can just minimize this stack view here. So with this minimized, I need to add two labels. So let's go to our object library and we're going to say label. And we want to click and drag and add that below our stack view here. Notice it's a little difficult. Now, notice when I added that, it was indented incorrectly. Um, so let's add another label. Let's make our second label. Notice there, you see that little indicator. And if I see, see this indicator, how it's indented more, that would add it to that stack view, which we don't want. So here I have my other label. Okay, for this first label, let's go to our attributes inspector, and we want to add some height constraints and set the font size and the text. So here, notice um, with this first label selected, it says we have over here the alignment. We want to set that to centered. And then for our font size, we want to set this one to 30. So if I click here, I can change the font and double click and I can change that to 30. All right, let's go ahead and add some text so that it shows up. We'll, we'll fix this here real quick so it shows up. 
but at the moment um, we've set the font size and then for the second label we want to do the same set it to centered and then change its font size to 20. Now we can add some constraints so that they'll force their way in, they'll show up. Go ahead and set uh, with this first label selected, go down to our add new constraints. We want to set a height of 60. We'll add that constraint. And then for the next label, we want to add a height constraint. And for that one, we're going to set it to 44. And now we've got our labels. Awesome. Okay, we've got everything set up visually. Um, make sure when you look, you've noticed that when we were changing uh, constraints and sizes, that there were errors showing up. And the error would show up in this little indicator. So for example, if I undo the last constraint. Notice over here on the on this uh, hierarchy, there's an error and it says, hey, content priority ambiguity. Um, there's no vertical layout and it's giving you all sorts of suggestions. Basically, because the label has no height or width, the height constraint, it doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't know how high everything else should be. Well, in order to fix that, what we do and what we had already done is we select that label and we add a height constraint. So remember we set this height constraint, what was it, 44? And then now that error went away. So if you still have errors here, then you need to go back and verify that we did all of the alignments. Remember we changed settings on the stack views as well. So be sure to review that. Okay, let's wrap up this part of the video. And in our next video, we will start to add code and make this into a real application. Did you subscribe yet? Oh, you're already subscribed. Awesome. Thank you.